All right, you guys, so today's episode is going to be a little bit weird because I'm not actually going to have any of the physical cameras that I'm gonna be talking about today present at the moment because today we're gonna to be talking about film cameras that I regret selling. These are all cameras that for one reason or another I have either sold or gotten rid of uh, and they are cameras that kind of leave a mark on me because I definitely, definitely, uh, you know, miss them. And so I wanna talk about those cameras today tell you guys a little bit about my experiences with them and hopefully put you guys on in case some of you guys haven't heard of these cameras yet. Now today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about how they can elevate your photography to the next level here in the new year. But for now you guys, let's jump right into it. Here are some of the film cameras that I regret selling. So this list is going to contain five different cameras. I believe five, let me see. Yeah, so there, there's five cameras on this list, but I'm sure there are a ton more. Um, but these are the main cameras that I feel like at this point in time uh, really have left a mark on me. Now, because of the reviews that I do on this channel, a lot of the time cameras just come and go. And so for the most part, uh, some cameras I'll only have for about a week, week and a half just to do a review on it. Others I'll hold on to, but will end up selling for, you know, a different piece of gear. I always try to make sure there's a balance between that, so I'm not just hoarding stuff. Um, but we're going to start off here with a Canon camera. And this camera was one that early on, you know, in my film photography kind of, not career, but like when I started shooting film, this camera was everything to me. And that camera, you guys, is the Canon A1. Now the A1, I like to look at it as it's the bigger brother to the AE1 program. And one feature that the A1 had that the A1 program didn't have was all of the different shooting modes. So it had shutter priority, aperture priority, obviously manual exposure, as well as a full on program mode. Not only that, the A1 just felt a little bit better than the AE1 program, had a you know nice kind of shiny black paint to it. And of course there were plastic components to that camera, but the A1, it was an amazing camera, and if you guys have one, I'm sure you guys can back me up here and say that it is an amazing feeling camera in the hands while you're out shooting. The reason why I sold the A1 is just that it was sitting on the shelf for too long, and at that time, I was shooting more with the Canon F1, and so there really wasn't a need to have two FD mount cameras in my kind of arsenal, just because I didn't even shoot the F1 that much either, um, and so I got rid of the A1 for that main reason, but I do kind of regret it now because that camera was just amazing. Now, moving on to the second camera. The second camera was my first medium format camera. And if you guys are thinking it was the Pentax 67, it wasn't. My first ever medium format camera was a Yashica Mat 124G. Or it was just the 124, the silver version that I got off of um, an auction site. The Yashica Mat 124 is a twin lens reflex camera, so it has the ground glass that you can see through. Two different lenses, one for focusing, the other to actually make the photo. Uh, and it was an insanely fun camera to shoot. Now, unfortunately at that time, because of the six by six format negative that it shoots, I wasn't really into shooting square format. Uh, and with that came you know, my decision to sell off the camera um, and go for something more traditional like a six by seven, something similar to like a two to three ratio. But if you're just getting into medium format film photography, the Yashica Mat 124, I'm pretty sure can still be had at a pretty decent price point. It's also one of the most beautiful looking cameras. It's similar to what a Rolleiflex looks like. Um, and so if that's something that you guys are into and you want to try out, that is a camera that I would highly recommend. It has a nice little crank. Um, and honestly, it's just a blast to shoot with. And made, the shooting experience is what made that camera really, really fun, I guess you could say. <laughs> so now that we got the first two out of the way, the last four here are going to be cameras that are fairly recent kind of you know regrets. These are cameras that I truly regret letting go of. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that here in just a second. But really quick, I wanna give a huge thank you and shout out to our sponsor for this episode, the good folks over at Squarespace. Squarespace is your all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. 
Now you guys, in 2022, having your own personalized website is a no brainer. You have a dedicated space for your portfolio and you can even open up an online shop. And the best way to do that is through Squarespace. They give you all the tools that you need to get started. You can have a site up and running in just minutes from templates that you can use to get started. Um, and the best part is you guys, Squarespace is going to hook it up with 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Just head over to squarespace.com slash kingjapes or enter promo code kingjapes at checkout to receive 10% off of your first purchase of a domain or a website. Huge thank you to Squarespace Man for sponsoring this episode. All right, the next camera is near and dear to my heart and it's the Nikon Nikon 35Ti. How do you guys say Nikon? 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 Now the 35Ti was a beautiful camera. It was the first real premium compact film camera that I have ever owned. On the top, it had an analog display that displayed your, I believe, uh, focusing distance as well as your aperture and your, um, what's the other one? Frame counter, that's what it was. And it looked like a really old watch, you know, like a really nice premium Rolex watch on the top. Now with that said, the 35 Ti came with a pretty hefty price tag. And that's partly why I ended up selling the camera. You know, the camera was beautiful. It had a really sharp 35 millimeter 2.8 lens, but I also felt like it was just a camera that was too valuable for me to hold on to and not really get the love that it deserves. And so I ended up getting rid of the 35 Ti just because I thought there was better options out there at a much more affordable price point than the 35 Ti. And uh, you know, that was kind of the main reasoning behind it. But I do regret selling the camera though, because having it and just being able to make like online social media posts and also shooting it, I guess maybe it, it's a camera that is more aesthetically pleasing rather than it being, you know, functional. And I'm not saying that it, it's not capable of making great images, it absolutely is, but it was always one of those cameras that I was afraid to ding up or really put it to the test out on the street because I didn't want to mess it up. And that leads me over into the next camera that I regret selling, which I believe is probably a better alternative to the 35 Ti at a much more affordable price point. And that camera, you guys, is the Nikon L35 AF. Now, if you guys have been a fan of this channel for a while now, you guys know that about three years ago in 2018, was that eight, three years ago? Four years ago in 2018, I scooped up a Nikon L35 AF. And that camera, you guys, was absolutely amazing. I made a couple of videos of it on the channel and it blew up in popularity. Um, and then I ended up selling it just because, you know, like the other cameras, they were just sitting on the shelf. At that time, I was shooting a lot with my Voigtlander Besta R2 way. And so the L35 AF really didn't get a lot of love. And so I ended up selling it off. And that was my biggest regret at that time, up until about recently. Recently, I was able to find a couple of L35 AFs. And so this is probably the only camera right now that I have, um, you know, present and available. Now this copy is actually a little bit special because you gotta give it a, like a little tap on the side uh, here and there when you haven't shot the camera for a while. Uh, I don't know, maybe something in the electronics here, but uh, this copy, you know, I learned from the last time I'm not going to get rid of. So this is my forever L35 AF right here. And if you guys don't have one already, it's a camera that I would highly, highly recommend. It's beautiful and right now you could probably scoop one up for about 150 bucks to about 200 bucks that's at least what i would pay for it all right so the last camera that i have for you guys is honestly the one that leaves the biggest hole in my heart because it it, it was a camera that i would use weekly it, it was part of my workflow and i considered it to be you know the kind of main workhorse in my setup here that camera you guys is the canon eos 3 and if you guys have never heard of the Canon EOS 3, it's this chunky looking DSLR camera. Sorry, not DSLR, it's an SLR camera because it takes film, but it looks just like a standard Canon 5D, like Mark III, for example. That's the best way I could describe it. Classic SLR Canon looking camera. Um, and it took the Canon EF lenses, which was amazing because you would be able to shoot all of that film, but be able to put on your Canon glass. And so I had glass from Sigma, I also had like an L series at one point, 35, 1.4. Uh, and it was just a great setup because I would take it onto my portrait shoots, whether I was doing family portraits or maybe even like grad stuff. I would shoot engagements with it and it allowed me to be able to shoot film alongside my digital setup um, because the EOS 3 very much looks like a modern day kind of DSLR camera. And so when you would present that to people out uh, while you're making photographs, 
you know, it wouldn't feel any different. It would feel like you weren't shooting film. Now, the main reason why I sold the EOS 3 was because I wanted to take the Pentax 6-7 more onto my shoots uh, and get some more medium format in there. I think there's a certain quality and magic to uh, the 6x7 format that just can't be replicated by 35 millimeter film. Uh, and so I started using the 6.7 alongside my Sony a7 III, and that's, at this moment at least, my go-to setup for any type of like paid portrait work. So I sold the EOS 3, it's gone, and I sold off all of my Canon EF glass. Uh, and do I miss it? I do. You know, I had this really, really amazing kind of shutter, really clanky, clunky, clanky, I don't know, but uh, yeah. If I could get it again at a good price, I probably would. Looks like my rice is done. <laughs> All right, so those are the cameras that I regret selling. Now, before I actually just end this off, I wanna talk a little bit more about some honorable mentions. One of them being the Minolta A7, which was very similar to like the EOS 3 in a sense that the Minolta A7 was an SLR looking body. Uh, it took all of the Minolta autofocus glass, the Sony A mount. The second camera being the Canon QL17 G3, a very nice, compact, affordable rangefinder camera. Uh, maybe not affordable, but uh, it, it can definitely be had for a pretty nice uh, price. And if you guys can get a good deal on it, um, it's a rangefinder camera that I recommend all the time to people who are just getting into the rangefinder system. Now, other than that, those are the main two that kind of fit the honorable mentions list. That is my list for film cameras that I regret selling. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And if you guys have any film cameras that you regret selling yourself, leave those in the comment section down below. Maybe I'll get an idea and pick one of them up and try it out. Thank you guys again, man, for tuning into this episode. As always, this has been King Japes. Till next time. But not again. All right, so there goes end of roll number one. Got two more rolls to shoot. Uh, but we're gonna go on the move really quick to our next spot. So a lot of times when I feel like I am lacking. Free.